everyone and welcome to another video. So I feel today is the right time now just to share with you guys my honest opinion so far with the Indian Scout Bobber. So I've just done over 1500 miles now so I've got a good feel for the bike, I'm feeling comfortable and uh, yeah I'm really really impressed with the bike if I'm completely honest with you. It's just been an absolute dream to ride, it's exactly everything that I wanted out of the bike. It's fast enough, it handles well, everything that you want. Um, it's just been brilliant. So there is a few questions that people always ask me, either randomly, like people I've never even met in my life, or just things that I see online that ties up with what people ask me. I just want to go over a couple of the questions that I would like to try and help some people out with. So one of the questions I get asked quite frequently is, is the Indian Scout Bobber an ideal first bike? Now I can quite comfortably answer that because this is my first big bike as you want to call it since passing my test and I've ridden other bikes before this I used to do a little, little bit of motocross for fun I've had bikes when I was 16 etc so I've got some sort of bike experience on so I feel fairly confident to get on something like this now this is where if you're a nervous rider I probably wouldn't recommend something like this I would get something smaller cc'd and work your way up but if you're one of these people that's confident, you've ridden bikes before, then definitely I recommend this for a first bike. The value on it's good, it's never really gonna depreciate. Because the bike's so unique as well, um, it's probably gonna make you wanna keep the bike. It certainly is making me wanna keep it, just for that reason alone. It just looks awesome. Everywhere I go, people always compliment the bike, or they're not sure what it is, so they start chatting to you, asking what it is, what CC it is, what horsepower, all that kind of stuff. It just gets you, chatting to people just amazingly it's just crazy really to be honest with you but yeah i'm really enjoying this bike i'm pretty certain that i'm going to be keeping this bike for quite a long time to be honest with you now another question i get asked is how long did it take me to adjust to the handling of the bike because the foot controls are forward and is the suspension as as hard as people say so yeah the suspension definitely is as hard as people say it is um, if you've driven a car before with a set of coilovers on on the hardest setting that is pretty much the same thing but on the bike um, if you hit a pothole or anything like that it really does jolt your lower back and you definitely do feel it so you have to be always aware what well, you do anyway you always have to be aware of stuff that's in the road and just swerve out of the way of it but uh, yeah separate to that it took me around 40 minutes on the bike solid and it just completely changed like it's a weird it's weird to explain like the bike just felt like it changed completely um, you've after about 40 minutes you just felt really with the bike really engaged and the bike seemed to be more flickable again I'm just absolutely astounded by the handling of the bike um, I'm really really impressed with it so yeah the handling is very good the suspension definitely you can get changed but again it comes with a cost so you're looking around a thousand pound to get that done and you'd have to adjust it yourself or get the indian dealership or whoever's going to adjust it for you so it's just got another expense you've got to consider unfortunately but yeah 40 minutes as i say that took me roughly to get used to the controls and the handling and i was pretty much happy to carry on riding the bike Another question, and this is very common, is how comfortable is the seats or how comfortable do you feel on the bike on longer journeys? Uh, well, for me, I'm only five foot nine, so I fit on the bike perfectly as it is from the factory. Um, I've been riding on some journeys for solidly two and a half hours to almost three hours on this bike without stopping and it's no different to just sitting in the car for a long period of time for me so you just kind of want to stop have a stretch and you're happy to get back on the bike however if you're a taller person your knees are sitting up a lot higher up near the tank as you can see up here and the foot controls will feel really far forward which is going to make you feel unnatural on the bike so you may need to stop on the bike a lot more if you're a taller person to have a stretch if you're going to end up keeping one of these of course but uh, you can buy extended controls for these bikes, which will make your ride more comfortable. But again, it comes at a cost. But yeah, it all depends on how much do you want this bike. If you're looking to get one, you may have to make some costly purchases to make yourself comfortable. As I say, for me, I've got no issues. Like I fit on there absolutely fine and I love the comfort of the bike. I have no issues with butt pain on the seat like people keep saying. I don't, I don't have any of that and I've let other people have a ride on my bike and they say it's really comfortable compared to some of the stuff they've ridden. 
So again, it's each to their own, but I have personally no issues with the comfort side of stuff. The next thing which I'm gonna say is the power of the bike. Now this is one thing that shocked me to be honest with you because I thought that being a heavy cruiser it wasn't gonna like pull very well or it's gonna be a bit laggy but I tell you what for a bike that's 100 horsepower being a cruiser as well it shifts and it keeps up with a lot of stuff. Funnily enough I had someone in front of me the other day that was overtaking some cars on the way home. I think it was on a Kawasaki Z something or other. Um, just not like absolutely nailing it, but he was going pretty quick round cars and I was pretty much just behind him, keeping up with him. We got to a set of uh, traffic lights and even pulled up to him and said, crikey, doesn't that thing shift for a cruiser? I said, yeah, it, it you know, it doesn't hang about. I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the power of it. So uh, yeah, that was one thing that definitely shocked me. When you really start using the power and winding it on, it definitely does shift. Um, but it's really, really enjoyable and controllable. That's the funniest thing. It's not like deafening fast, but it just, it's a nice, I don't know, it's a nice power. It's the only way to describe it really. So yeah, the power, definitely another thumbs up from me. It's really, really good. It's enough to keep you satisfied and not get bored of it. Uh, but yeah, you can also do a good tune on these bikes. Apparently that's night and day difference as well. Uh, I don't know how much that would cost. That's not something that I've looked into being that I'm fairly new with the bike still, but maybe in the future, I might look into it and get that done and then do another review on what I feel on that. But what I've seen online, it is apparently worth doing. But yeah, have a look for yourself if you're looking at getting one possibly. Another thing that people have asked me is, have I done a lot of night riding on the bike and how good is the headlight? I've done a couple of dark nights. Um, the headlight is okay. It's, I wouldn't say it's really bad, but it is. it could do with being better than what it is, should I say. To be honest, when you've got your full beams on and there's nothing in front, I don't think that it's too bad. But uh, yeah, when you've got your dip beam on, uh, yeah, it could be better, but it, it's livable. I think it has to. I think that's just going to come down to how good your your eyesight is on a bike. To be honest with you, um, but yeah, it's not really bad. But yeah, one thing that I want to upgrade on my bike is the headlight to the LED version because mine's got just the standard one. So uh, that is something that maybe i should do a review on in the future just to do a, a before and after difference and let you guys know if it's worth it but yeah it's not too bad again it's livable another question is how long does the fuel last so that's an interesting question because that's gonna always depend on how you ride uh i always do 110 miles and fill back up because i don't know if you guys know that's done a little research the indian scout bobber especially my year i don't know about the newer ones i think they're the same you only have a fuel light that comes on the LCD screen. Uh, you, it never tells you how many bars of fuel you've got left or anything, which is really, really frustrating. That's the one thing that really does get on my nerves with this bike. Other than that, it's fine. Yeah, when the fuel light does come on, people say, well, how many miles can you get out of the bike when the fuel light kicks in? It's roughly 20 miles, I would say, to be, well, 15 to 20 miles uh, you have left on the bike. Some people have had a bit more 25 to 30 maybe but on average it's around 20 i believe there's plenty of like posts on the internet with people saying they've put that to the test and they've got literally 20 to 25 on average and then, and then their bike just completely cuts out pretty much and you've got to go and get fuel so yeah just um take a note of your mileage when you fill up and then just calculate 100 miles to 110 just to be safe and then just fill it back up i know it's annoying but that's that's one of the things that I've experienced with my bike is just what you've got to do, unfortunately. So another thing with this bike, which is my own doing, is how loud this bike is. So this has got some Maverick crusher pipes fitted to it. That came with the bike, uh, if you watched my previous video. I'm just gonna flip the camera around now for you guys that haven't seen. So here are the exhaust pipes. So as I say, they're called Maverick crusher pipes and they are ridiculously loud, like too loud, if anything. I really do like the sound at the same time. It matches like the, you know, the blacked out look of the bike as you want to call it. But what I've done, all jokes to a side, is I bought some Oxford silicon earbuds, or earplugs as you want to call them, which are in that little canister just there. Um, if I don't wear those and I get off the bike and anyone tries talking to me, I can barely hear them, it's that bad. I've never ridden anything that drones so bad, like inside your helmet, to the point where it makes your hearing so faint. It is really dangerous. 
but yeah it does make this bike sound really angry like people love the sound of this thing and including myself but uh yeah if you're gonna put some aftermarket pipes on them there's plenty of different options online if you are looking at getting one of these as well just um make sure you get the exhaust that suits your needs that suits your needs is all i can say because this is far too loud like if i have my way i want to get the uh the two to one freedom pipe so you still get that same loud sound but you can buy the silencer extra i believe which is something i may have to look into in the future but for now as long as i wear earplugs it's fine i can live with it so yeah i think that's pretty much the main questions i always get stopped and sort of ask those kind of questions i just wanted to cover those up just to help some other people out but yeah i think that's pretty much it for today so my honest opinion so far so good 1500 miles i'm definitely gonna be doing more than that um coming up in the next few months i've got a lot planned on this bike i'm gonna start trying to do some um, onboard videos as you want to call it so keep an eye on the channel for that until then i'll catch you guys in the next one